Hey, AP English. So, again, couldn't find the audio for the document, so I am going to read for you On the Want of Money by William Hazlitt. Remember, it is a passage. It's not the full thing. Um, he was a 19th century author. All right. And then also, you know, think about um, his rhetorical strategies and... Uh, what he uses to develop his position about money. Literally and truly, one cannot get on well in the world without money. To be in want of it is to pass through life with little credit or pleasure. It is to live out of the world or to be despised if you come into it. It is not to be sent for to court or asked out to dinner, or noticed in the street. It is not to have your opinion consulted, or else rejected with contempt. To have your acquirements carped at and doubted, your good things disparaged, and, at last, to lose the wit and the spirit to say them. It is to be scrutinized by strangers, and neglected by friends. It is to be a thrall to circumstances, an exile in one's own country. To forego leisure, freedom, ease of body and mind, to be dependent on the goodwill and caprice of others, or earn a precarious and irksome livelihood by some laborious employment. It is to be compelled to stand behind a counter, or to sit at a desk in some public office, or to marry your landlady, or not the person you would wish, or to go out to the East or West Indies, or to get a situation as judge abroad and return home with a liver complaint, or to be a law stationer or a scrivener or scavenger or a newspaper reporter, or to read law and sit in court without a brief, or to be deprived of the use of your fingers by transcribing Greek manuscripts, or to be a seal engraver and pour yourself blind, or to go upon the stage or try some of the fine arts, with all your pains, anxiety, and hopes, and probably to fail, or, if you succeed, after the exertions of years and undergoing constant distress of mind and fortune, to be assailed on every side with envy, backbiting, and falsehood, or to be a favorite with the public for a while, and then thrown into the background or a jail by the fickleness of taste and some new favorite, to be full of enthusiasm and extravagance in youth, of chagrin and disappointment in afterlife, to be jostled by the rabble because you do not ride in your coach or avoided by those who know your worth and shrink from it as a claim on their respect or their purse, to be a burden to your relations or unable to do anything for them, to be ashamed to venture into crowds, to have cold comfort at home, to lose by degrees your confidence in any talent you might possess, to grow crabbed, morose, querulous, dissatisfied with everyone, but most so with yourself, and plagued out of your life to look about for a place to die in and quit the world without anyone's asking after your will. The wiseacres will possibly, however, crowd round your coffin and raise a monument at a considerable expense and after a lapse of time to commemorate your genius and your misfortunes. Remember, this was written in 1827.